And, uh, you look after the agriculture and the water resources in Zimbabwe and uh, we are delighted to have you here. I am General Sudhir Sharma. I am Chairman of Midcat Advisory Services, which is a company which does security and strategy consultancy in the world. But my question to you is basically is that what is your thought process on renewable energy in Zimbabwe and how are you looking at doing anything to do with putting uh, wind or solar in the country? Is there any thinking process? Do you think about it? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shama. Uh, with regards to renewable energy from Zimbabwe, uh, there are basically two sources that we are looking at. Firstly, solar energy. You realize that Zimbabwe is basically a rural economy based on agriculture, mining, and about 75 to 80% of the people live in the rural areas. And solar energy therefore becomes a very, very critical source of renewable energy because the inhabitants in the rural areas can just buy a solar panel, put it up their home, <coughs> and they, they, they have light. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, solar energy uh, with regards to renewables is a very, very top priority. But over and above solar energy, we have the aspect of, uh, you know, bio energy. Okay. Uh, you know, for example, uh, the production of ethanol for purposes of blending with gasoline so that uh, we can use, uh, you know, blend for operating our petrol cars. Currently, Zimbabwe is blending at 10%. Okay. However, uh, you know, blending with ethanol for gasoline is still an optional, uh, you know, activity. But certainly, uh, one would like to think that with time, because we import all our you know, fuel, uh, if we can blend it with something that we produce on our own, certainly this brings down our import bill and is something that is worth pursuing at a national level. Okay. And of course, uh, I know uh, people talk about biogas uh, at a very, very <coughs> micro level, schools, hospitals, you know, it's also an option to think about. Thank you. So Thank with regards to Zimbabwe, this I, is what we're doing. I was also very intrigued to hear that uh, Zimbabwe is uh, gifted with uh, large tracts of arable land, very good temperature conditions and weather conditions. So how can the land be put to optimal use, firstly by using a lower quantity of water because you also deal with water, and therefore can you leverage this great asset of a country for energy generation uh, without impinging upon the food requirement which you can feed a lot of places in the world by your figure. Any thoughts on that, sir? Thank you very much. Uh, I know that uh, <laughs> the food energy nexus is always a, a big question, big question. nowadays. Uh, uh, certainly in Zimbabwe, we are very alive to this, uh, uh, you know, uh, contradiction, I would like to call it. On the one hand, we need energy, renewable energy from agriculture, and on the other hand, we need food. And we cannot substitute food for anything. Absolutely. So unless and until we're able to balance that equation, uh, we think that uh, the priority will always be food first and then uh, production for uh, fuel production, you know, purposes uh, as, a second, uh, as a second runner. Definitely Zimbabwe, is 39 million hectares in extent. And out of the 39, 33 million hectares are reserved.